This is Yair Davidi speaking to you from Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Speaking to you on behalf of Britain, Hebrew nations, a movement and an organization that finds the lost ten tribes now amongst Western peoples. And we prove this from uh, the Bible, from Scripture, from rabbinical commentaries to the Scripture, also from secular sources, uh, history, linguistics, mythology, archaeology. Uh, every field that has something pertinent to say on the subject, we uh, study it. We have found evidence and proofs showing and proving and confirming the biblical affirmation that the lost ten tribes now are to be found amongst Western peoples and the tribes of Joseph, especially amongst the so-called English-speaking peoples of the USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and uh, to some degree uh, amongst the other Israelite nations such as Ireland and, um, and uh, p p p portions of Western Europe. And that is where the, the lost in tribes are to be found, with the uh, tribes of Joseph, the tribes of Joseph being Ephraim and Manasseh amongst the English-speaking peoples. Now we are, uh, we are about to begin a series of talks concerning, not concerning lost in tribes, not concerning Joseph directly, even though it has implications co about them, concerning them, and it involves them. But we're going to talk about Esau, or in Hebrew, in modern Hebrew pronunciation, Esau. Esau of Esau also known as Edom. Edom uh, was uh, another name for Esau. He was the twin brother of Jacob. Jacob is also known as Israel. Jacob was the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. And uh, Esau was his twin brother and Jacob took it, the, uh, the um, blessings that were supposed to come to Esau or that Esau may in some sense have been supposed to receive. Jacob took them from him. And uh, ever since then, he saw the Edomites have been resentful towards Jacob. And in biblical terms, depicted as the arch enemy of uh, Jacob, he saw in the Bible there uh, is uh, mentioned here there is a kingdom of, of uh, Edom uh, that he saw gave rise to in uh, southeast of Judah or southeast of Israel in general. But that was not the only Edomite entity mentioned by the Bible. We also find. Uh, conclaves of Edomites or groups of Edomites ruling or being present in Babylonia and also in the north in the region of Armenia and uh, scattered throughout the Middle East and we uh, have been able to uh, find indications that descendants of Edom of Edomites became very important in a lot of different countries and they were often a military warrior people a military ruling class and they gave rise to much of what we know uh, we now call civilization and it may be attributed to Edomite founders. And uh, we also find uh, Edom amongst European peoples. And to some degree we may find uh, Jacob, I mean we may find Jacob amongst the Lost End tribes. Jacob is the Lost End tribes. And Edom gave rise to the Germanic people. But there was also an intermix, an overflow. Some Israelites also to be found amongst the Germanics. And some Germanics from Edom also to be found amongst Israelite nations. But the, and this is, uh, this is something we'll, we'll discuss it. We'll talk about it a little bit. And uh, this present talk is only going to give a, a, a few outlines, a very brief outline of the whole thing. But God willing, in later talks we'll discuss these matters in, in great more detail. And if you have any questions or queries, please get in touch with me. Because uh, that is what I do. I answer questions to the best of my ability when I can. So, and uh, I do this on behalf of Brit Am, Hebrew Nations, the movement finding Austrian tribes amongst Western nations. So we say, first of all, we should clarify a few things. To get to a few things straight before we start off, the Germans are not the only candidates for Edom. Not only that, but most Germans are not Edomites. And descendants of Germans in North America are not the same as Germans in Germany. They're different. Also, another thing with the identification of Germany that in some sense... Uh, Re relates to Edom, or Edom may be identified with Germany, that will help our equation of the English-speaking peoples with Joseph. So uh, now uh, a little bit of a very brief explanation. We find uh, Edomites all over the world, as we said. The ruling class of Japan was also probably from uh, Edom, the proofs of it. There's also a recent Chinese scholar of great erudition, according to reports. And this woman found uh, proofs. According to the report, we saw that the Foundations of early Chinese civilization in China may be traced back to Edomites. 
Uh, also, Edomites became uh, important throughout the ruling classes of Europe and also with the help found in Rome. The Roman Empire was ruled with the help of Edomites, people descended from Edom. As we said, there, were, there was an Edomite nation to the southeast of the land of Israel. So sometimes this may cause confusion because the Edomite nation was indeed part of Edom, was descended from Edom. But that was not the only Edomite entity in existence. Edomites were all over. And Edomites were in several different areas. So when we talk about Edomites in general, or when the, the, the sages or, uh, or the biblical prophecy speaks about Edomites, they're referring to Edomites as the physical descendants of Esau. Not necessarily those who were connected to the small kingdom of Edom that did exist, otherwise known as Edomea. And uh, we find other Edom in other nations, Russia, Russia was also ruled by Edomites, the very name Russia, Russia, Rus, in some European languages can answer uh, red, Edom in Hebrew means red, also when Russia was under communist rule it was known as the Reds, the Reds were another name for communists, and for the communist rulers of Russia were known as the Reds, in other words the Edomites. Um, a lot of Edomites also found in Italy. The Romans, as we said, were, were from, uh, in part, in part, descended from Edomites. Also amongst the Jews and maybe some Edomites. Many of the early Christians may also have been uh, Edomites. I think the Ebionites should also be examined. Uh, that's another point and a point for others to go into. Uh, in principle, though, we should uh, make it clear from the very beginning, Germany, the German people are not, mostly descended from Edom. Most of Edom, according to the sources, come from Japheth. We, we had Noah, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth, or Japheth. Jazzeth, uh, two, one, two, two of the sons of Japheth were, were uh, Goma and Magog. Goma gave rise to Ashkenaz, Rephat and Togoma. And uh, different sources uh, suggested all of the sons of Goma were to be found amongst the German people. The people now comprise German. Germans are descended from uh, in a certain, uh, to, uh, to a significant degree from Ashkenaz, Rifat and Togoma. Even now we're in, um, we have the word Ashkenazi, you've almost certainly heard of Ashkenazi Jewry, Ashkenazi Jews, meaning European Jews, Jews from Europe. How did they get that name? Because they had a tradition that Ashkenaz, the son of Goma, uh, had settled in Germany and they called Germany Ashkenaz, uh, Ashken uh, Germany in their rabbinical writings is referred to Ashkenaz the beginning there were Jews in the area of Germany, but they were pushed out by crusades and persecutions and economic pressures and all kinds of things, and they went to the east. When they went to the east, they settled down in, in, in the Eastern Europe and other parts of the world, but mainly in Eastern Europe, and there were, in some cases, already Jews in the places they settled in, or in other, case, in other cases, they were the found, founders of settlements in, in that area. And they took with them Germanic culture, and sometimes this Germanic culture was considered superior or it uh, gained the upper hand, as if to say, because also the rulers of those areas were pro-German or Germanic at that time. And so the, uh, the, uh, the whole of the customs and the, the traditions were accepted from these Jews from Germany, and therefore they were called Ashkenaz. And after that, Ashkenaz became a generic uh, word, a, gener a name in general for Jews from Europe, in general. It derives from Germany, from Ashkenaz meaning Germany, in the same way we call Eastern Jews Sephard. Sephard in the Hebrew or in Hebrew tradition actually means Spain. And the, many, and the same thing happened, the were Jews in Spain, the Jews in Spain were very developed, they were cultured, civilized, uh, wealthy, and they were um, of a higher high class of people, one could say, but they were expelled from Spain. They were expelled from Spain. They went to the east. They went to North Africa, and they settled amongst uh, different Jewish communities there, or founded their own communities, the same as the Ashkenazic Jews in Europe had done. And uh, so, wherever they settled there, the customs they brought with them became the dominant, what was accepted at the time. And so, uh, in uh, in uh, in Jewish uh, terminology. As the whole of Eastern and North African Jews are referred to as Sephardim after the fact that, that the Jews from Spain who had uh, come from Spain were, had been at some stage important amongst them. At all events, another, another element uh, that the, the sources suggest that gave rise to the Germans are Magog, people of Magog, and also the Canaanites, the Canaanites and also other people.
other peoples also. So Germany is a mixed people like everyone else. Also, when we say Germans, we have to be uh, a bit careful. You have the Germanic language. The Germanic language, in effect, it decides who is German, who, who is Germanic. And actually, the scholars say that the Germanic languages originated in Scandinavia, they originated in the north. And then they moved eastward and they conquered different peoples and they uh, intermixed with different peoples and they uh, uh, imposed their language structure and their languages on, on the peoples they conquered whilst at the same time being influenced by these peoples. And uh, so a lot of peoples in Germany who speak, uh, who speak German may not necessarily be German and uh, there's, uh, in, the, in the strict sense, there's a lot of differences between South and Northern Germans between East and Western Germans, even though there, there also is a, is a unifying factor amongst them. We sh shouldn't take this point too far. Uh, the Austrians are also Germans, not only that, but other peoples in Europe, for instance, they say the Hungarians. They say that physically the Hungarians are mostly descended from Germanic immigrants to Saxony. And what, what you had, the Magyars conquered. Hung Hungary was a Slavic or a mixed group of peoples who were in the region of Hungary. They were conquered by the Magyars. The Magyars were Turkish type people from, from uh, Eastern from Asia, from uh, Central Asia, they conquered uh, the area of Hungary. They imposed their languages and their customs and their traditions on the people. But then, but over the years, they uh, brought in or they came in a large number of migrants from Saxony, from Germany, and uh, physically, most Hungarians may actually be their descendants, even though their culture and their ways of thinking and even their consciousness, they're, they're, they are Hungarians, they are Magyars, but uh, that is not so. All events, and but uh, you, these these type of, of distinctions may be taken, or may be found all over the, in all in a lot of different areas when you go into the history and the origins of different peoples. So that's uh, that's what we wanted to say that um, the Edomites are to be found all over the all over the area, all over the, all over the place, but especially in Germany, and this will be important. We also uh, should point out that. Rabbinical tradition, based on the book of Abadja, the book of Abadja, the Abadja is a, one of the, uh, the book, uh, one of the books of the Bible. Uh, the book of Abadja talks about the destruction of, of Edom, the wars against Edom, Esau in the end times, and then it, it, there's uh, verses that indicate that Joseph will conquer Edom, and the um, the sages commentating on these verses said that Joseph, only the Joseph, the tribe of Joseph, meaning Esau, meaning. Uh, Ephraim and Manasseh is capable of conquering uh, or defeating Esau. Esau is a warrior nation and only people from, from Joseph can uh, d defeat them. Or other sources say that it has to be sent from Rachel. Rachel gave birth to Joseph and Benjamin. So also Benjamin also has, has this, this, uh, this ability to defeat Esau. Though primarily it will be in the hands of, of, of Joseph. But Benjamin, as being descended from Rachel, the wife of Jacob, also has this ability. And we find in the Bible that Saul, the first king of Israel, he was from Benjamin, he was given the source of wiping out Amalek, which he did not do, but he was given this task. And uh, because, because he came from a tribe that uh, traditionally would have the ability to do this. And uh, if we uh, identify or associate, uh, accept the association of Germany with Edom, from a biblical prophet uh, point of view, then we have, um, and then we have, if we, and we're also going by way of nature, looking for things that are, that are feasible, that are rational, that are in line with historical experience. So, to Joseph, who will defeat Edom, must become from a nation that has proved itself in the past historically been able and uh, has had the proven ability to defeat and conquer. Germany. And so we find that, that amongst the English-speaking peoples, they've done that in two world wars. Uh, in the First World War and the Second World War, they defeated and conquered Germany. And uh, we have other proofs, numerous biblical proofs, and also historical evidence that the tribes of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, settled in the British Isles, and that from the British Isles, uh, those uh, segments of the population that pertained more to Manasseh went to North America, went to the USA especially, so that the USA, for this and other reasons, may be identified with Manasseh from Joseph, whereas Ephraim pertains more to, to the British Isles, to the Britain and its offshoots. And so this is a proof, and we will have another talk about this. We will quote the verses and we'll give a, have a discussion on it and give you more, more things to say about it. 
Also, we should mention that um, that being descended from Edom is so it's not should not be so negative. It should not be considered so negative. The Edomites, as we will show, as may be shown, did a lot for world civilization. A lot of ancient kingdoms and and the, and the, and the advance of culture and human civilization may be attributed to Edomite rulers. They were Edomites were great warriors. They were destined to become great warriors and, and formidable. Uh, and, and to be formidable in, ev in every in every sense of the world, word. And Germans have, have contributed a lot to civilization, a lot of uh, scientific advancement and research is due to Germans. We engage in research. I engage in historical research and other and other fields all connected with this thing about Los Angeles, but uh, it branches off into a lot of different fields. And so we, uh, we too use German sources, and the German sources are often very good. Sometimes they're better than than what you'll find anywhere else especially in, in details and, and in, in different aspects of this research, the Germans have, have, have a, do have achievements. No one will deny that. And also in the end times, uh, Esau will, uh, according to tradition, will repent. He will return. He will be accepted. And so will Ishmael, the forefather of the, of the Arabs. So, and, not on, and not only that, that everyone, each and every one of us, we are descended from someone. We all have a, some type of, uh, of traditions, or some type of ancestry. And we should be proud and we should do justice to our ancestors and justify them through our lives. We give, uh, merit, bring merit onto them and also onto our descendants. Uh, and uh, a lot of us are a mix of different, uh, different uh, in inputs in us and we don't really know. None of us really know where we descend from. We may assume, based on, on, on uh, different factors, that we also discuss that they are, we are descended from Israel. But it may, may not be so, or it may be only partially so. I myself, my father was uh, Welsh, and originally from um, his ancestors on the male side were from Ireland. We, we assume, as far as we know, also. But his mother, his mother was also Welsh, but she had uh, one of her uh, uh, close ancestors was apparently from the family of the ruling house of, of Britain. They were ha the Hanoverian monarchs from Germany, and so technically they too were Germans. If 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 this uh, if this is tr if, if this is correct. And as we said, with the Germans, um, a lot of the Americans, uh, people in the USA, are from Germany. We have a, a lot of people who support us, who are sympathising sympathisers of us, who support our endeavours, our researchers and I work to promote the, the concept and the, the consciousness of those in times. And I do have ancestors from Germany. And as we have said, the Germans who went to the USA were different from those who stayed behind, and we will also discuss this. But you never can tell, you never know. We always, we always have to have a little bit of, of tolerance in the way we, we study things. But this, uh, this degree of tolerance should not blind us, should not be allowed to blind us to the reality to the reality of biblical identifications and their implications. Thank you very much. We will continue this subject shortly. Thank you. May God bless all of you.